It's bittersweet, but Dapper Volk's beta testing phase came to an end just before midnight on October 25th. That means it's high time to reflect on the past six months of testing. And what a fun and productive six months it was. So many issues have been addressed by the staff, whether it be with fixes that are already implemented or fixes that are promised to be implemented for official launch. Not to mention the quality of life and aesthetic updates. But I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. Let's take it one thing at a time and start by talking about the biggest updates rolled out throughout the course of beta. The planned content updates that were advertised in the initial Dapper Volk beta news post. These include the addition of the game's third and fourth towns, Sylvie's Mine and AVR Cove respectively, as well as a test run of the game's site-wide event feature, which was made possible thanks to the overwhelming success of the Kickstarter way back in August of last year. For Dapper Volk, the addition of new towns means, alongside new shops, pets, clothes, and minigames, new NPCs, and story content. Just like with my last video, I won't be touching them in the slightest. This is because throughout the course of my gameplay, I've come to understand that Dapper Volk's story and character interactions are way more enjoyable if you go into them knowing almost nothing about them in advance. Each character you meet is incredibly unique and special, both in regards to their visual design and personality, and I'd be doing a huge disservice to those watching who haven't touched Dapper Wolf before by spoiling them. So instead of discussing things best left discovered on your own, I'm just going to say that the rhythm I briefly touched upon in my original Dapper Volk beta review does not get stale. Just like the NPCs, each location you explore and moral dilemma you work through are engaging and have so much individuality. After playing through all of the main storyline content that Sylvie's Mind had to offer, I told pretty much everyone I knew who would listen that the writers outdid themselves, and I have the same exact opinion to share post AVR Cove. So that says something super exciting about town drops in the future. The amazing quality they've gifted us thus far should stay consistent. As for everything else that's included in the new town update package, I could basically say the exact same. All of the currently existing mini-games have interesting designs and accommodate for different preferences and playstyles, which is exactly how your pet site mini-game spread ought to be. Sooner or later, there should be something for everyone. I've already praised the art time and time again, and my praise stands. Every time I see a new pet or clothing item, I gush and wonder what the next one I see will be like. Not to mention what new palette and changes their recolors and evolution will consist of. Even pets that happen to be based off of the same real-world species, like these two rabbits for example, are dazzling in distinct ways. But there is one instance in which I think this running theme of diversity isn't reflected, and that's the mouthpieces that you can equip to your avatar. I didn't do any counting before the site went down, so this statement isn't going to be backed up by numbers. I apologize for that. But based on what I've seen throughout the beta test, my gut says that most of the mouths I've collected reflect that of a neutral, sad, or grumpy expression. Obviously, I'm not intending to say that any of them are bad. They're gorgeous looking, just like everything else. But still, where are all of the smiley faces? A bunch of NPCs have adorable, standout, happy expressions that would make adorable, standout avatar mouthpieces. It's such a shame that their concepts go unused in favor of unquirked lip after unquirked lip. So it would be really nice to see this addressed with more varied mouths for NPCs in future towns, or even extra mouths made available per NPC. The only other thing I could possibly nitpick about in regards to the best iteration of a wardrobe system I've ever had the pleasure of playing around with is that held items that occupy one hand are assigned to a specific hand and can't be swapped to the other, which can cause some conflict and limitations when you want to equip multiple at a time. I can definitely see some kind of toggle being desired for that, but everything else about the system is airtight, and it only gets more and more fun to create outfits as you play through the story 
storyline and expand your collection. Outfit building is probably the experience I'm most homesick for. So I'm really eager to see the wardrobe system again in its perfected state and official launch. And if dress up games are your thing, then you should be too. I'm especially excited about the promise of more animated clothing items, personally. For reference, rare animated clothing was yet another feature that was unlocked thanks to Kickstarter funding. The animated clothing items themselves are called rare because they seem as if they're only going to be obtainable through things like site-wide events. In fact, the one animated item we got to play with during beta was obtained through the site-wide event test. More on the event itself in a little bit. It's called the Spring Bloom. It's a perpetually blooming and wilting bulb that sits on top of your avatar's head. And it isn't only beautiful to look at, like so beautiful and mesmerizing. I genuinely don't know how many times I caught myself zoning out looking at it, but when equipped, it also provides your character with an increase in the rarest and arguably most valuable stat in the game, luckiness. Because I didn't really address luck or stats at all in my original video, let's go ahead and take this opportunity. Stats, like in most RPGs, are permanent or temporary values attached to your player character, party members, equipables, and consumables that serve functional purposes. You're usually going to have to grind them up to some extent if you want to make progress. This grinding process can be facilitated by all sorts of things, usually combat in the genre of which we're referencing, but in Dapper Volk, it's through the main plot, side quests, and daily tasks. While you're doing the main plot and side quests, you can occasionally earn yourself base stat increases by picking specific dialogue options that would somehow reflect the stat in question. Daily tasks, on the other hand, function like your usual pet site dailies. Every day you can pick the stat you want to train until next reset and the page will generate a set of things for you to do across the site, like play mini games and interact with your pets, NPCs, and even other users. Once you do one, you can be rewarded with zero, one, or two base stat points. The variance in the stat increase itself comes from stat affinities, which are determined by which class you pick at the start of the game. In my case, I play it as an animal, and as stated in their informational blurb during character creation, they have an affinity for honor and a weakness for comprehension. So when I grinded my honor stat through daily tasks, I'd sometimes get a bonus point, whereas when I grinded my comprehension, there was a chance for me to end up with nothing and have to try again. The main reason you want to grind your stats in Dapper Volk is because the main plot will have stat gates, usually one per town, that require you to have a certain amount of a stat before you can continue on. Some stat gates aren't as harsh as others. For example, one stat gate I encountered required me to have a certain amount of a stat, but it didn't need to be my base stat, meaning I could just equip clothes that would increase that particular stat for the duration of time that I was wearing them. Another wanted me to increase a base stat by a specific number of points as of the moment I interacted with the NPC who presented me with the gate, and that particular stat happened to be my class's weakness, so it took me a full week to contend with. Then again, the next gate I encountered happened to be an honor gate, my class's affinity. I was able to vault that one in a fraction of the time. Being advantaged and disadvantaged due to your choice and class at different points throughout the game is an intended aspect of its design. So for those who might have been concerned by the prospect of it, it should turn out to be rounded and fair in the grand scheme of things. And even if you're bummed out by being blocked off for the moment, there's plenty of other things to do on site in the meanwhile, like work on bettering your character's relationship with the NPCs you already have access to or collecting more currency. You can never do enough of that. You probably noticed that I haven't talked about the luck stat at all during this entire spiel. That's because luck is special and doesn't function like the other four in-game stats. It's not a permanent base stat that you have an opportunity to stockpile on a daily basis. You can only increase your luck stat by equipping clothing items with a luck stat benefit to your avatar, setting a pet that inherently has a luck stat as your active companion, or equipping your active companion with a luck totem. The only pets that inherently have luck are legendary pets, the most difficult to alchemize 
this in the game, and luck totems are similarly difficult to get your hands on. If the pattern I observed in beta will hold true for official launch, then you'll only get one per every other town you clear. And it's not like they're stackable. You can never have two of the same totem equipped to one pet at once. So you can really only reap the benefit of one regardless of how many you have, which I think makes the avatar items and the legendary pets a little bit more worthwhile. So what does luck even do? Good question. It directly affects your RNG when you spin chance shops. The more luck you have, the more likely you are to get less common items. So you can probably see why the things in the game that increase your luck are so coveted and infrequent, right? They make for an awesome event participation incentive, if anything. Speaking of, let's get back to the topic of Beta's site-wide event. The premise of the event was that Trout, a resident of the game's second town, wanted to put on a puppet show to help support himself in light of his struggling turnip fields. But seeing as he'd never done anything performance-like before, he wanted everyone's help setting up. And boy, was there a lot to do. We had to supply refreshments, by which I mean fork over our food items, practice magic tricks, meaning item alchemy, spread the word by doing daily errands for other NPCs who we would presumably be advertising the puppet show to, and rehearse with our pets by interacting with them in some way. All of these tasks were worth different point values and could be performed at timed intervals. The tasks that were worth the most points would generally have longer cooldowns and could only be performed so many times a day. For example, the task that required us to do item alchemy was worth a whopping 85 points, way more than any of the others, but had a 4 hour long cooldown. The goal of the event was to earn enough points as a community to fill up the progress bar on the event page before our 22 day long time limit ran out. In doing so, we would be awarded prizes based on how many points we earned individually. If you contributed over a thousand points, you'd qualify for the bronze tier batch of prizes. If you contributed over 5,000, you'd qualify for the silver tier batch, and so on. If we failed to fill the progress bar, no prizes would have been distributed, and there was an implication that there would have been some kind of bad effect on Trout within the plot. Interesting, huh? It really spawned a desire in me to see a site-wide event with more dire circumstances than whether or not a baby would get to have a puppet show. I mean, if Trout didn't get to host his puppet show, I would have fell into a depression pit so deep I might not have recovered. Because Trout is the sweetest little turnip baby you'll ever meet, and I know I'm not alone in saying that I'd wage war if it meant I could protect his happiness, but you get what I'm saying. Though the event was cooperative in nature, there was also a competitive edge to it. Testers who scored within the top 25% of event participants won the animated Spring Bloom item, and were promised to be able to keep it for official launch. That's assured luck right out of the gates. Which brings us to the common event-related concerns, one of which was directly related to the possibility of being within the top 25%. A lot of people felt like it was too unobtainable. Some even expressed feeling like filling the progress bar was something we wouldn't manage to do on time. To those feelings in particular, I'd say let's check out the data from the event. Data that the Dapper Volk staff provided us with, nonetheless. Throughout the course of it, 2,000 2,745 users participated to varying degrees. 25% of 2,745 is 687. That's a lot of people to win an elite carryover prize, so that should be heartening in itself. But here's the piece of data that I think is even more heartening than that. Also throughout the course of the event, 676 users achieved gold tier. That was the highest and most rewarding tier you could possibly achieve with a personal score of 10,000 points or higher. And I know that 10,000 points sounds like a lot, but in the grand scheme of things, it really wasn't. I did some math for myself and calculated that if you made a point to pop on three times a day, every day that the event was active and did one of each event task, which should only take you under 10 minutes each time you popped in, you'd be slated to hit gold tier with only a little extra tasking. You know, on a day off or something. That's ridiculously achievable. What about being in the top 25% though? I hear the hypothetical version of you I have in my head asking your computer screen. 
That's the thing! The top 25% consisted of 687 users. The number of users who got over 10,000 points total was 676. That means every user who put the effort in to reach the highest bar that the event set for them and then some qualified for the bonus prize, which is so reassuring and perfect. Am I saying this is how it will pan out for every single event and official launch? Well, no. I'm not psychic, but the Dapper Bulk staff can use these numbers they gathered to help craft and balance them, making achieving their desired result all the more likely. Another concern pertained to the way in which the event was designed to end the moment the progress bar hit 100%. That meant that the event could end prematurely before the final second of the 23rd hour on the 22nd day, which many criticized would make you feel like you were stealing points and opportunities from other users if you were striving to score higher than the bare minimum. Fortunately, the staff addressed this directly. They confirmed they'll scrap it entirely, which will allow for users to participate freely as well as plan ahead to reach their desired tier. They also addressed the fact that when users users were tied on the scoreboard during the event test, the system would order them alphabetically so that the users with the lower ID numbers and their username would take precedence and be ranked higher, which is obviously pretty unfair. This issue won't persist for official launch, and users who are tied will likely share the same rank on the scoreboard. And one last thing, for those who don't really like the notion of the general event formula and might be wondering, there will be other event types for variety, as well as more flavor text and art assets to spice them up. So if you're really committed to the idea of collecting all of those future event prizes, but aren't a fan of the gameplay style Beta's event in particular consisted of, this timed point collection mechanic won't be all the game has to offer. You won't be condemned to it for all eternity. But to its credit, I will say that for as grindy as it sounds on paper, I was personally not bothered by it. The charm of the tasks, like the dailies, is that they'd be things you'd probably be doing in your usual time playing around on the site anyway. They're brief, familiar, rewarding in themselves, and don't ask you to go out of your way. So like with all things, give it a chance before you grumble about it. After that, if you feel so inclined, you can grumble about it to your heart's content, but definitely give it a chance. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. Aside from those biggies, I want to mention some other notable additions the game received during beta. This script is getting pretty long though, so let's just do my top three favorites. Three! Comb cakes and candied shells. They're such a small touch, but so revolutionary and tasty looking. Comb cakes and candied shells are guaranteed rewards from every daily errand you complete for an NPC. Which one you get depends on which town you're in. And though they differ in appearance, their core functionality is the same. They're designed to be an extremely accessible pet food as well as alchemy materials that you don't need to spend potatoes to obtain which Dapper Volk absolutely needed for its balancing. Two! Affection milestones with NPCs. When you reach a certain amount of affection with an NPC, you'll receive letters with presents bundled inside as well as unlock side quests centered around them. They really serve to make befriending them feel like less of a trek and more of a fulfilling process. And I saved the best for last, keyboard controls for text boxes. Alternatively titled, Dapper Volk spares my wrist once again. You can now toggle the progression, regression, and fast forwarding of all story and NPC interaction based text with the tap of a key. And all of the keys are in the same vicinity on the keyboard. This particular update made me so happy when it dropped that I'm pretty sure I got misty eyed. The ability to fast forward is especially useful for daily errands that you're already familiar with. The process goes so much faster. For additions that are confirmed to be coming for official launch, we're going to use the same formula. Big three. So here's number three, the ability to have a second avatar, which will essentially function as a second save file attached to your account. You can get a fresh pick at a class and go through the storyline anew, picking different dialogue options and going different routes than you did originally. A must have for a game that has branching anything. It's so cool that they're making it an option for people who want it. Two. 
guilds! Straight up guilds with customizable banners, emblems, colors, content layouts, a mini forum, live chat, quests, and events. Who wants to preemptively join mine? And one, housing. Not much has been specified about housing just yet, probably because it's still very early on in its developmental process, but it will allegedly be integrated with adventuring in one way or another. Why is it my number one most anticipated feature even though I barely know anything about it? Well, probably because I'm imagining something crossed between Animal Crossing home expansion and decorations, and Towns and Gaia Online, but in my all-time favorite browser game. That's Dapper Vault. Just in case you didn't know. And that's more than enough to make me excited. I know I'll adore it regardless of the form it takes. Just like I and so many others adore Dapper Bulk, period. It's just really special. And I'm so happy that sometime next year, way more people are gonna know and celebrate that. So... Wow. It's wild to say it out loud, but this concludes my Dapper Wolf beta coverage. Very special thanks to those who have stuck around for my very first video on the subject back in March. And if you're new and want to see more from me in the future, you can always subscribe on your way out. Official launch might be coming as soon as January 2019 after all. And you better believe I'm gonna be making videos on that subject too. In the meantime, I'll be making plenty of videos about other pet sites as well as other video games in general. Remember to stay up to date on Dapper Volk's development by following its social media accounts and joining its official Discord server, all of which are compiled in the video description below. And while you're in the business of checking out social media, all of mine are down there too. I usually post all of my video and stream updates on Twitter in particular, so if you're gonna pick and choose one, it might as well be that one. Thanks again guys, and see you soon!